You positive heads, welcome to a very special episode dedicated to none other than you, the pea heads themselves. I am your pea head enthusiast and hostess for the day, Alexa Hauser. I have been blessed to have the experience of helping out with Positive Head social media for the better part of a year. And through my digital interactions, I began to realize, as did Brandon, that we have some incredible beings listening to the show who are taking the information that Brandon puts out through the podcast and using it to transform their lives and create wonderful things. You listeners are all a huge, huge part of the life force that propels this show forward through time and space and we think it's time to bring forth some of you beautiful reflections and delve a little deeper into this collection of energy that is the positive head community so as we shine the spotlight on our listeners what we'll have them do is share their stories of how they attracted positive head into their life the transformation it's facilitated for them and what they're focused on creating now that they're in a more positive head space Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com slash Positive Head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com slash Positive Head. Check it out. Hello, all you positive heads. On this week's P Head Posse episode, our guest is positive head listener Larry Armstead II. Larry is a spiritual coach and home cook that is taking the world by storm. Seeing a need for a step over the law of attraction, Larry Armstead II heard these words during his nightly meditation that forever transformed his life. In life, we don't get what we want. We get what we expect. That caused him to chase this wisdom like a madman. He holds a Bachelor's of Arts in Sociology and Spanish and a Bachelor's of Science in Information Technology. Hi, Larry. Welcome to the show. Hello. You make me sound like an overachiever. (laughs) Well, it's funny because I actually know you I, and I, I know that you are an overachiever in a way, in the, in the best <laughs> ways. Um, this is this is so funny. It's like a merging of worlds. So Larry has actually been on uh, the other podcast that I co-host with another P head, Ambie, um, Inner Bloom. He's been on our podcast twice. And a couple of weeks ago, I wake up and there's an email from Brandon who hosts this show for day, who created and hosts this show four days a week. And he was like, Hey, uh, how about this guy? And he, or, you know, uh, he, forwarded an email over that you had sent or a communication that they had had together. And yeah. I was like, I know this guy. And, and it was the same for me. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a beautiful surprise. And we were back together again uh, on Positive Head this time. So um, I know that you all are in for a very, very big treat. Larry is a very amazing, special, uh, exuberant personality. And I'm very excited to have this conversation. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Flattery will get you everywhere with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Larry, why don't you, we always like to start at the beginning here. So why don't you give uh, the listeners, you know, um, your story about how you got on this path, how you got to doing what you're doing now? All right. Well, I am um, from little small town in Evansville, Indiana, um, in the middle of nowhere, basically. They they say we're the third largest city in Indiana, but it's really a little small town in the middle of nowhere. Um, and just growing up, I was one of those little guys who just looking out, uh, looking out the window, I would see, you know, the other people, the other guys in the neighborhood playing. And I just didn't feel tough enough or enough or welcome. But, you know, it was kind of like the only place that I saw the welcome sign was in the home, specifically um, in the kitchen and behind a good book. Um, You know, I remember walking into the kitchen when I was little, about six years old, and I saw my oldest sister um, making scrambled eggs. And as she was making scrambled eggs, she accidentally dropped one on the floor. And I'm sitting there watching her kind of taking mental notes. And I was like, I can do this. So um, 
you know, during the summer after everyone was gone, my parents were at work. I said, I'm going to make scrambled eggs. And I thought that was the way you made them. I thought you took an egg, you threw one on the floor, you cleaned it up, <laughs> you cleaned it up. And then you went ahead and put it in the bowl and everything. And I tell you what, they were the greatest scrambled eggs I think I've ever had. Um, and I'm not saying that only because I made them at six by myself, <laughs> but um, I, I was doing that. My mom walked in one day and saw me doing that. And she was kind of like, what are you doing? You're wasting eggs. So um, she was like, I, I, here it is. I'm going to put you in the kitchen. So when you get older, you don't have to rely on anyone to cook for you. You're going to know how to do it. So I felt completely at home in the kitchen while, you know, like I said, my friends were outside playing sports and doing all that good stuff. I was in the kitchen learning and enjoying making great great tasting food for everyone. But still, even going through all that, um, I also found solace in uh, reading and books. I always had a book in my hand, no matter where we went, no matter what was going on. I've always been a seeker of knowledge. Um, so even growing up in the Baptist church, um, I, I it was just that experience for me was not enough. I was still seeking and searching more um, than even that it, that spiritual ex experience. So I still felt a little excluded even in the church. Um, so, and as you know, Alexa, you know, um, my friends started calling me Paralary. Um, mm. and, and Paralary is just, you know, I, I, I'm a psychic medium. And um, I began doing readings for people. And I, again, I kept seeking spiritual knowledge and I began picking up books and, you know, getting getting my hands on anything I could. Um, and I picked up The Secret back in 2006, and I absolutely loved it. Um, but even then, it still felt like something was just excluded. or I, It just felt like something was not there. Something was left on the outside. It was just like playing with the boys. It was just like the church. It was just something that was missing. And finally, it you know, I, like I heard in my meditation, in life, we don't get what we want. We get what we expect. So that is how I became um, obsessed with the power of expectation. Um, I, I finally got that message, and I want everyone to get it, too. It, it, it's it's palpable, and it's powerful. Mm. Yeah, so why don't you go into that a little bit more? I mean, we everyone here who listens to the show is very, very, very familiar with the law of attraction um, and, you know, specifically like Abraham Hicks. What, what does that mean? Like that we don't get what we want, we get what we expect. Well, it's, it's exactly that. So I, I'm actually um, in the middle of listening to um, some Abraham Hicks stuff right now. Um, and it's just, I, I felt like, you know, the law of attraction is you know, we, we get what we put our, our thoughts on and what we focus on, but it, there's a, there's another step. So if the law of attraction is a vehicle, the power of expectation is the driver, right? Mm. So, so for me, it's not so much what you put your mind on It's after you've put your mind there, what do you expect to happen after your mind has been put in that location? And that's what the power of expectation is all about. It's about not getting what you want because in life, you're not going to get what you want. You're going to get fully what you expect. Mm, right. So it's like if we want something, but we expect something else to happen, like if we want if we want to become a millionaire, because that's the easiest example that comes to mind, but we don't uh, expect. Yeah but we don't expect to become a millionaire, then we're not going to become a millionaire. Like we're going to. <laughs> Go absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's one of those things where um, I, I say you have to listen to the subtext of what you're really saying. And a lot of the subtext that happens occurs in our minds. Um, mm. So you, you have to kind of ob observe your thoughts as, um, as an observer. You have to look at your thoughts. You can say, okay, yeah, I want to be a millionaire. I, I really do. But there's always that, that thought that, comes up in your mind yeah but that's not going to happen and what if this and what if that and th that right there that's the subtext and that mm -hmm. is what you're truly expecting not what came out of your mouth but what you were really thinking behind all that that bravado mm. and what can we do to trans transmute that transform that you know um get over that obstacle of what we expect how can we change what we expect well, the first thing you have to do is you, number one, have to begin, like I said, observing your thoughts. Really listen to what you're saying because you can say you can say anything like it's like um, what my mom says all the time. She's like, you can tell me anything, but your actions say something different. So it's about really sitting back and listening to what you're really saying, making sure that what you're saying matches with what you're really thinking. Mm. And then um, also allowing yourself to actually feel things. A lot of times we, we, 
you hear so much stuff about, oh, the ego this and the ego that, and we just don't like to feel, and I don't understand that, um, because, and I like to use this in analogy, you know, people think of things like leftovers, for example. We're about to come up on Thanksgiving, right? So we'll yes. have plenty of, oh, yeah, I cannot <laughs> wait, right? Me too. I cannot <laughs> wait. <laughs> um, I'm, I mean, I'm actually doing all the cooking this year, believe it or not, so pray for me. <laughs> oh, I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like having leftovers in the fridge. You know, after three days, you're sick of Thanksgiving food, but you don't have to throw those leftovers out. Those leftovers can be repurposed. So those those fragments of thoughts and those things that you're thinking can be tweaked and can be transformed into something else. So you actually do get what you expect. And that's the beauty of the power of expectation. Mm. So what is like a way? So you're saying observe our thoughts. Like, uh, f- find out what we're really expecting first. Well, see, and, uh, uh, here we go. I have an yeah. awesome, like, I have a three-step technique. Oh, really. yeah, give it to us. Yeah, that, that'll get you there. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do if you're, if you're wanting to work the power of expectation is, number one, identify the expectation. What do you expect? What is the expectation? So we use the um, example of being a millionaire. Is that what you really expect? Identify mm-hmm. it first. So let's first get clear, you know, I, let's get clear about what your what that identification is. Second step is identify it. Um, what simple step are you willing to take to act on your expectation that mm. you identified in that first step? And then the third step is called expect anticipation. And I know that is a tongue twist and you're like, what? The easiest way to remember it is, <laughs> you know, you, know, you remember that old song, Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Yes. yes. I, I, I throw my stuff in there. Supercalifragilisticexpianticipated. So, <laughs> so you anticipate it. Okay, there you I go. Got it. There you hear it? Oh, yeah, I so, got it. <laughs> <laughs> so the third step is just to expanticipate it. Set a date. <laughs> Set a date mm. by when you want to see this come by. Follow those three simple steps. And that is how you're going to see the power of expectation work for you time and time again. Mm, I like that. Yeah, that all makes a lot of sense because it's 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 setting the it's I'm just repeating what you're saying, but it's it's <laughs> it's making an intention, essentially. And then it's it's it's. Putting, I was just talking to my dad about this today about like, man, sometimes like the best, you know, all it takes is one step really in the right direction to get the momentum moving. So like, I like that too, is like, then the next thing is like just one simple step in that direction. And then setting the date actually um, grounds in like the intention, like it really like makes it real because you're putting an actual time on it. Whereas a lot of us are like, oh, one day I'll do this one day I'll do that. And that just has like the intention floating around in the universe somewhere. Right. Absolutely. Um, and the, one of the greatest examples of that is um, I was talking to uh, my cousin and um, she asked me, you know, do you see me? Um, she was kind of asking what uh, kind of a psychic medium is question, but she was like, do you see me getting a promotion in my, my job? And I said, absolutely. And um, she came to me maybe a week later. She was like, well, Larry, the promotion thing just happened and I didn't get it. I said, well, you didn't say you didn't ask by when you didn't set a date. Mm. You said, do you see me get a promotion in a job? And I absolutely do. But the universe needs time to deal with. Like you said, it's something you can ground your heels into. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because like things are always evolving. So it's like we have to be specific about when we want things to happen. Otherwise it can happen anytime. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So, um, well, so you, what are you working on now? Because I know you have a new book coming out or that's Ooh, out, yeah. right? No, it'll be out on December the 14th. Oh, um, I know. Uh, it's It's been a labor of love and I've enjoyed every single piece of it. Um, it's called uh, Where's My Pizza? How to Use the Power of Expectation, expectation to Create the Life that You Want. Um, mm. and it is, it started out to be just a very, very, very short book. And the more I kind of went through it, um, I realized that, you know, I was doing some channeling with spirit and spirit was speaking to me first. Um, and then I was mm. able to give those messages to everyone else. So, um, I, I've been working on that. It is available for pre-order on my website, um, at Larry-Armstead.com. You can also get it on Amazon and, um, even Barnes and Noble. Wow. So yeah, why I'm it- real excited. Why is it called, and why is it called Where's My Pizza? Oh, that's a good question. So, okay, <laughs> so I, I was talking to a friend, um, and her question, she was, she was just really frustrated about some stuff going on in her life, and I said, well, you know, 
it's like calling a pizza place and saying, hey, I want a pizza. And the guy's going to be like, mm hmm, okay, is this going to be carry out or delivery? Well, I don't know. I just want a pizza. Okay, um, how you're going to pay for it? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just want a pizza. Well, uh, what's your address? What do you want on it? I don't know. Just bring me a pizza. And then you hang up the phone. Mm. And then you're, you know, 45 minutes later, you're looking out the window and you're like, where's my pizza? Mm. There you <laughs> so, go. Zing. Yeah. yeah so that, that's how it came to me. Oh, I like that. I like that. Cause at first you're like, where's my pizza? And then you're like, oh, and then when that's explained, you're like, that's exactly what it is. I've actually heard that metaphor a couple of times, not with a pizza, but with like, uh, like giving an order to a waiter, like the order, the waiter just keeps coming over. The server keeps coming over and saying, do you know what you want? And you're just like, I don't know. But then you just keep expecting food to show up. It's like, I, I love that. I love that analogy because it's so true. It's like, you got to be specific. You got to give details about what you want if you want what you want to show up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. So what is in what is what uh, where's my pizza? What what are we going to find in this book? You're going to find so so many things in this book. The It's written to be number one, a quick read, um, but it's not it's not to be digested quickly, if that makes sense. So it's, it's a <laughs> short it's a short read, but I want you to really take your time as you're reading it to, you know, Take the concepts that are in there aboard. So you'll you'll identify. I've identified what I call the spectrum of expectation, and that's just kind of a a stair step of the process that expectation takes. Um, and you kind of get to identify where you are on that timeline based on whatever you're looking, to, um, whatever your desire is in your life. Um, then we teach you in the book as, as well how to get clear about those things, um, about how to begin negating yourself. Um, your self-limiting beliefs by saying something different, by changing your thoughts and changing your world and changing your life. Um, then I also um, do a little elaboration on how to see things before you see them or you never will see them. And I'll say it again. Mm. You got to see it before you see it or you never will see it. Mm. So it's a, you know, it, that, that's the process of visualization. And then in the back of the book, um, since I am a home cook as well, um, I have come up with about eight or 10 recipes from all over the world that I've written uh, myself, along with my um, fabulous cousin, Cherise. Um, she is a chef and we came up with pizza recipes that kind of are from all regions of the world. So mm. there's pizzas back there from, um, Asia. There's an awesome Brazilian pizza back there. Um, I, I know I mentioned the Asian pizza, but it's my favorite one because it has kimchi on the top. It's so great. Um, there's a Canadian pizza back there um, that I don't know. What's if on familiar. that? Poutine? Yes, poutine. <laughs> what? Yeah, I kid I'm you not. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Just poutine kidding. is on the top. Um, uh, and then there's, wow. a, there's a few other ones back there that are just amazing pizzas. Uh, Spanish inspired pizza. Everything is back there for you. You're making me hungry, Larry. Uh, that's well. Where's your pizza? <laughs> where's my pizza? <laughs> Seriously, where is it? So hungry. And and, and that's the thing. When I, uh, I I wrote this book, you know, being a home cook and a spiritual coach, I just wanted to say, you know, food is the one thing that we all have in common. It's the one great equalizer. So mm. I didn't want you to read the book and say, okay, well, where is my pizza? Um, <laughs> you don't you don't have an excuse. You can flip to the back of the book, make the yeah. pizza, and then enjoy it as you're reading. You're giving every you're giving like everyone like a two for one or like a three for one. I don't know. There seems like there's a lot of different elements of this book. You can read it, you can eat it, you can enjoy all all the way around. Feel nourished can, all the way around. Absolutely, you can listen to it. There's um there's three meditations that come along with it. Whoa. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's three meditations that come along with it that are going to help you. Um, and then I have just been asked to do an audio book for it, so I'll probably begin doing the audio book for it in January. Wow. Things are moving. This is awesome. Yeah, so it's coming out, did you say December 14th? December the 14th, yes. So it's a perfect gift for the holidays. Abs everyone should get two or three <laughs> yeah. or four. If you have a big family like me, like I, I, I literally have 23 nieces and nephews. So yeah. get, for me, get 23 of them and just, yeah. just pass them out. Just pass yeah. them out. Go down, go down to the mall. And as you see people walking by, just be like, you know what? You look like yeah. you could use a pizza. <laughs> Here's a pizza for you. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. That Maybe like the next edition can actually be in the shape of a pizza. 
Just an idea. Oh, yes. So it looks like. That would be amazing. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is awesome. Okay. Well, okay. So that's where's my pizza. So what about like your spiritual coaching? Because when you were on Inner Bloom, we actually, and you need to come back and do this again because you were such a big <laughs> hit doing this. Like I, I was like, oh, Larry's about to take over our, take over our show and n- never give it back. And it'll be fine because everyone loves him so much, but you were doing, <laughs> uh, Larry took over our Facebook live and was just basically doing spiritual coaching for an hour with our listeners. And he was just killing it and, uh, giving Ooh. such amazing advice and just like such a pro, such a natural. Um, so what is, what is the deal with your spiritual coaching and what kind of people are you looking to coach? Well, it's so awesome. So um, I'm revamping, well, Parallary.com will stay up, um, but I won't be doing um, readings through Parallary.com for much longer. I know that people are like, no, don't say that. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I know, no. we, right? But I do have other psychics that I do trust that I have vetted myself that I've made read for me um, just to make sure they're on the up and up. So that's who that will be going to. But as I'm open, as I'm kind of doing this transition um, to where's my pizza, I'm actually opening LarryArmstead.com. And what I'll be doing there is I'll actually have some signature programs, some signature coaching programs um, and be kind of playing on the home cook thing. I'll have an entree. I mean, an appetizer level. I have an entree level and then I'll have the the gourmet five star level. Um, (laughs) So I I cannot wait to share that with you. Some of it will be um, kind of those uh, pre-recorded online courses. Um, The gourmet level, I'm toying with kind of doing a weekly Facebook live and we do um, an exclusive Facebook group and we kind of take apart the book. We, I work with you, um, in the group to identify expectations, um, to get, yes. you know, get clarity and get all that stuff. So that is how the coaching is going to come and to be. And I'm so excited. I'm working really hard on the website right now. Oh, I really, I love how all that sounds. That sounds perfect. That's uh, the whole plan. I love it. Um, well, here's a question, you know, what are some of the top things that you think that, would be beneficial for the listeners of this podcast to know besides everything that we just talked about and the power of expectation in terms of like spiritual coaching. I'm asking you to coach our coach our listeners for free a little bit right here. Uh, (laughs) That's what I'm really asking for. Um, Or just a couple like top tips, like things that you think are, are, are important, especially right now, like relevant right now. Uh, okay, relevancy right now. Um, and if you're if you're not following me on Instagram, please do because I put a lot of this on Instagram um, over and it's officially underscore Larry. Um, but one of the biggest thing is when you are going on your spiritual quest and your spiritual journey, no matter what it is, you don't owe anybody any explanation of it. You don't owe your pastor. You don't owe your mom. You don't owe your boyfriend. You don't owe, owe your kids any explanation of your journey. Your journey is simply that it is yours. Mm. So I, I want you to really take Amen. that to heart. Yeah, ex- right? Because so, yeah. so many times people are like, well, I, I just had the question asked to me, uh, well, to my mom. Um, we had a little family gathering about three weeks ago that I wasn't able to attend because I was working on all this stuff. And um, one of my cousins asked my mom, well, is he still a Christian? And mm. my mom was like, well, um, why is that even important? Why don't you ask him? My mom is so – she's the greatest person ever because – she's she's right on board with everything Mm. um but you know she was like that's his business yeah and so and i that's what that's what i want to preach to you know to everyone that you know your spiritual journey is yours you don't owe an explanation of that to anyone and that's not a selfish thing to say that is a self full thing to say it's putting yourself first Mm. it's putting your oxygen mask on before you put on anyone else's Mm, absolutely and i i do really think that is like one of the biggest things that people who are going through uh like an awakening and the ascension process and all of that it's just like one of the biggest things that they struggle with like myself included just because it it we have been not only so used to people pleasing and making sure that we're appropriate right for the people around us like that's what all the systems in place have kind of trained us to do in certain ways but um but also just this fear like that, well, what if I change and people can't accept it? What if I lose people? You know, like that, I think, is truly at the core of like a lot of people's struggle with this, the, the fear that they will lose the love and connection. Yeah. And, and that, that goes back to expectations. If you if you expect to lose people, mm. you, you absolutely will. 
Yeah. You absolutely will. Um, but that that's why, you know, no one is allowed into that space. You know, that, that spiritual space of yours should be kept completely clutter free. And what I mean by that is no one else gets to go in that space but you. It is not a free for all for you to go say, hey, I believe this and da 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 da. No, that space is sacred and it's yours and you should guard it. So, mm. you know, th- that's just something that if people want to know, they can ask. But that that's all you that's your space it is your sacred time so don't be afraid to explore just because you were brought up one way and you now believe something different mm, love that that's great advice okay any anything else absolutely um <laughs> so you know you know you know i have stuff for yeah you. i know i know uh, <laughs> um what another thing is you know a lot of people feel stuck or they feel um lost or hurt but a lot of people were not were scared to speak our pain. Mm. Don't be you can't heal what you're afraid to speak. And I'll give you an example for that. Um, years ago, when I was a, a teenager, and I'm not going to get my age right now because you know, because <laughs> yeah, because you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But um, suffice it to say, I own. Um, <laughs> I'm not that old, guys. I'm not really. We, we both old. It's okay. We, we, we both old. Yeah, we both old. Um, but um, back when I was a teenager, um, I, I knew from a very early age that I, me and the girls thing was never going to happen. Boys mm. were was where it was at with me. Mm. I, I remember when I was about seven years old, I was in the back of my, our, my parents' car, and I asked my mom, how come an old maid... Um, you match two like cards together, but uh, when you get married, you don't do that. It's one boy, one girl. Mm. And my mom, and my mom had no answer for that. She was like, "I, I, I don't know. That's just the way it is." <laughs> <laughs> Good and, point, though, young Larry. Good point. Yes, yes. Interesting. <laughs> um, and so even then, you know, it was that. So um, yeah. As I grew up, I, I got really into the church and tried to pray the gay away, as so many of us often do. And mm. I could not say the words, I am gay, for years. And because I couldn't say that, there was a fear there. Um, and I couldn't heal that. I couldn't heal all of that stuff that was with it. So you have to be willing to speak mm. what your pain is or what your secrets are. And that's not to expose yourself. That's to take the power of it away from it. Mm. Is, oh, go. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, no. So and I was just going to say, so, you know, and it's not to say that it, it, and there's a very fine line in speaking your thing and then becoming addicted and a victim of your story. You keep on telling it. You keep on telling it. You keep on telling it. Then you become addicted to that feeling of victimhood that it gives you that rush. It's kind of like a drug that you pump into your veins. Mm-hmm. See? So it, it, there's a fine balance of telling your story to take the power of it and then telling it so much that you want people to feel sorry for you and then you're victimized by it. Mm, that's very true. It's a, definitely a fine line and fine balance and like finding that that right balance is like, and it's a feeling thing. I feel like, you know, like you can feel when you're, when you're telling it out of a place of power and when you're telling it from a place of something else. But, um, but yeah, you know, that is really true. Like um, I notice that a lot with my EFT sessions or even when I give myself an EFT session, because a, a lot of it is like speak about speaking, um, how you feel speaking honestly and authentically about how you've been feeling. And it's like a lot of, a lot of the things we're speaking are likely things like you have never said out loud, like you've never wanted to acknowledge or that the clients that I work with have never wanted to acknowledge or that I have never wanted to acknowledge even when I'm like doing tapping on myself. Um, and I notice all the time that when I say something that I have never actually said in a way that I've never actually said it, that's like very real, raw and honest while mm-hmm. I'm tapping, I get the biggest releases because it's it's almost as if my body was waiting for me to say it. It's like almost like something reacts, something releases, something. Uh, it's like a, it's definitely just like a big release, and it's almost like something was holding on until I could acknowledge that. And like you're saying, like take that power back, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Because I, I always say that the absolute truth may never be comfortable to speak initially, but it will provide comfort. Absolutely. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, you, you have to get it up out of you. And I, I think that's a lot of, you know, the issues that we have. There's just people are afraid to speak because they're afraid of the expectations that people have on them. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And 
And and like, here's a question I have, because I just kind of went through something like this, where something from my past that I'd forgotten about came into my awareness like about a couple weeks ago. And it had to do with my family and um, something that I didn't feel good about and something that I felt like it was that something I felt like I should tell my family, but tell my parents about. And um, and it was this immediate feeling that like I needed to tell them. But it was it was different because it was. In the past, I think it would be come from, coming from a place of weakness, like, oh, please forgive me, like, or, you know, feeling like so sorry and, and all this. But it, it this time it came from a place of um, more of power of realizing that I was the one that needed that needed to forgive myself. But like I, I took the action of like going to talk to my parents because I felt like that's what I needed to do. But I caught but there I, then it got me wondering a lot. It was like, OK, well, is it? Is it what we're supposed to do to go like, you know, tell, like you said, get these things out of us and like go have these conversations with every single person in our life? I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's like relevant, but I'm just curious what your thought is on on situations like that, because I feel like as we're all ascending and we're all growing and we're all becoming more conscious, we are becoming aware of these things that in the past we were very unconscious about that, like we justified or that we buried or we thought was okay in some way. But now we're coming into this more conscious awareness of these things that we've been keeping secret and burying within us is what is your perspective on that of how to, you know, do we, oh, is it our job or is the remedy to go have these very honest and open conversations with all these people? Or is it more so a self thing? Like, is it something in ourself that we need to just um, come to come to terms with or forgive ourselves for? Well, I, I think what happens is, it's kind of twofold. The first thing is realizing that whatever occurred, number one, being thankful for it. And you're like, oh, my God, but that was so bad. No, it's being thankful for it because it was mm. a great teacher. Yeah. Because now, you know, going forward, what you what to look out for, what you won't put up with, what you won't tolerate. So if these mm-hmm. things were great teachers for you. And then I think it also uncovers kind of what I always say about every relationship that we have in our lives. There are always three questions at the bare minimum of every relationship. And if any of them are unfulfilled, the relationship suffers in some way. And those questions are, number one, do you see me? Number two, do you hear me? And number three, am I important? Mm. And I want to throw it back on you real quick. Yeah. Uh, were, it, were any of those questions, any of those three questions unfulfilled for you, which is why you had to kind of go back and readdress some things? Yeah, I guess so, because... I guess I felt like the whole reason that this thing happened in the past, once I kind of remembered it and was processing it, um, the whole reason that I did this thing was because I didn't feel seen or heard. I didn't feel, um, I didn't really know how to get my needs met at the time. And I didn't feel like I had, uh, there was, there was a disconnect going on with me and my family at that time. Um, So, yeah. So I guess I guess that's correct. I definitely felt important, but I think there was a miscommunication. There was a disconnect with like feeling seen and heard for sure. Yeah. And like like I said, if any of those three are lacking, even if just one of those three are lacking, I mean, that's a third. (laughs) That's that's a big chunk. So if any of that's lacking, you know, the relationship suffers in some way. Mm, Interesting. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Cool. How about how about a third a third piece just to just to I like threes third piece of advice third piece of (laughs) advice most misunderstandings in our lives yeah come with us making up a narrative or a story about somebody that they know absolutely nothing about Mm, how how many times have we made up a story about our 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 husband our wife our mom our dad our boss that's a good example with your boss. You, you've done something at work and you're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, he's he's in, you know, your boss might be having a bad day and you think they're treating you a certain kind of way because of what you did. Yeah. Come to find out he was just having a bad day and you've made up this whole story about him, about why you're being treated this way, about, you know, I'm going to be fired and all that good stuff. You've made up a story about him that he knew nothing about. Mm. And that's, yeah. affecting, that's affecting your performance, that's affecting your behavior. So be clear about those things, you know, it. So many times we hold those things in, you know, such and such did this to me. 
okay, mm. but what? reverse it too. Look in the mirror. What was your role in this too? Then talk about it. Because if you've created a narrative that the other person knows nothing about, then how does anything get resolved? Mm, yeah, definitely. That is a powerful one. That's like where that authentic, open and honest communication comes in. It's so powerful when you can like really tell someone else how like you're perceiving them, like how you're feeling without being accusatory or without being defensive, like with just actually saying like, this is how this is making me feel. And the other person can say, oh, well, I didn't, you know, you can actually show each other how you were uh, misperceiving or like you said telling the story and you can learn from that experience I've definitely found that to be like some of my most healing uh, experiences having those types of conversations so oh I like that one absolutely and the, the biggest thing in that is allowing another person to have their experience because like you said we get defensive we're like I didn't do that I didn't say that I didn't behave like that well that other person you might not have felt that way or you might not have been coming from that direction but that was their perception. That was their experience. And they are perfectly entitled to their experience. Mm, definitely. Absolutely. And um, just another question is popping up for me right now to ask you. So, you know, you said you were listening to Abraham Hicks recently or a lot recently. And something that Abraham constantly is talking about is, um, you know, you don't have to go back and fix anything. You don't have to, your inner being never looks back. Your inner, like they're constantly talking about like what gets you caught up is when you look back on your life and try to like fix these problems and stuff. Whereas what you can actually do is just focus on, you know, how you want to feel and your vibration will rise higher and higher and higher and higher. And then everything will be kind of automatically, uh, put into alignment. What is your perspective on that? Do we need to go back and fix things or can we just kind of focus on what's ahead and find the vibration we want and everything will sort itself out kind of automatically? I think that it's a matter of not necessarily going back and fixing because I do believe that the river um, flows one direction forward. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do believe that a lot of the things that we go through put dams in that river and until we can actually get out and move the stuff in that dam, we'll stay trapped where we are flowing down river. Mm. So it's about kind of, like I said earlier, acknowledging the things that have happened to you as great teachers. And there, there's some bad things that have happened, you know, in the world to people. And you're like, how can I, how can that be a teacher for me? But I promise you, it, if you stop telling the bad stuff enough, then the good stuff will bubble to the surface. And that's the story. Yes. Yeah. I like that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> okay. Well, um, let's see. So I also want to ask, do you have any fun or inspiring synchronicity stories or manifestation stories that you'd like to share? Oh, my gosh. Synchronicity. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm it, – it's – everywhere it it's been freaking me out um <laughs> and i say that as a psychic medium as well um but I, i've been working with uh, my business coach um and her number for abundance and everything is 44 mine is 18 i've been seeing 18 and 44 back to back everywhere and i'm mm. like okay and then the the most recent thing that happened to me was just this past sunday so um, I, I had just gotten back home and I was going upstairs to take a shower and um, I, I hit the bottom step and I'm like completely just frozen. And I hear a voice behind me say, and there's no one in the house except for me and the cats. And I hear a voice behind me say, he's ready. And the cats are at the top of the stairs looking down on me like the kids from The Shining. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> with their tails just switching back and forth and back. They were their eyes were completely dilated. Oh my god. They were completely still, no tail movement, nothing. Oh my god. And and they were like looking past me. They weren't looking at me, they were looking yeah. past me. Yeah. And I'm still I'm still at the bottom of the step and I can't move and I hear he's ready. And I'm like and then I get the most loving and overwhelming goosebumpy feeling that I've ever experienced in my life. And I'm sitting here mentally, I'm trying to will my body to move. Like Go upstairs, take a shower, take a shower. And I could not move. I know I was down there for every bit of 15 minutes on that stair just holding the railing. And I was like, what is this? And then it lifted. And then I was able to go upstairs and take a shower. And it was just the rest of the night. I just felt very loving and very just, huh. That's the only word I had for it is, huh. (laughs) What was it? Do you know? I I do not. Listen, I do not know. I, I 
suspect that it was some sort of angelic force. Um, there, I Sounds do have, like Mary yeah, Magdalene the, or something. Yeah, I have one spirit guide who's been with me for forever. Her name is Orion. I've known her since, gosh, I was like 23. But she's always stood um, behind me, but she's never spoken. I've spoken to, but she's never spoken back. And she was, uh, when this happened, all my other spirit guides were kind of standing at attention, like if a a cadet um, was in the presence of a general that walked in the room. Whoa. The The only spirit guide that was able to move and do anything was that Orion thing. And she was, she was busy. She was busy. And I was like, what is this? And she was just like, he's, he's ready. You're ready. And I'm like, ready for what? And she wow. was like, you're, you're ready. And I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. That's exciting. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder, was it, was it on 11, 11 by chance? Was Sunday 11, 11? Uh, well, wait, today's the 14th. Oh, it was 13. And- it was. it was on it was on eleven eleven. Absolutely. Whoa. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, that, that oh. puts it a lot into perspective. Yep. Wow. Oh. Love it. Well, I can't wait to see how that plays out. You let, and me pl- both. Please let us know what you're ready for. Um I, <laughs> when you find out. <laughs> maybe maybe it's my pizza. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your pizza is ready. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, oh my gosh, I love this. Well, Larry. First of all, you already gave everyone how they can find you, but why don't you give them one more time where people can go check you out? Absolutely. You can find me on uh, my website. It's Larry-Armstead.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram at officially underscore Larry. Um, that's where I am the most active. I'm also on Twitter uh, as officially underscore Lair, L-A-R. Um I'm also on Facebook as officially Larry. You can join uh, my Facebook group there. Um, I'm on Pinterest um, as officially Larry. Um, and I also do share a lot of awesome recipes and stuff like that. I, I love sauces. Um, mm, so I make a lot of awesome sauces and marinades and rubs and things like that, um, that I share on Instagram weekly. So I hope you, I, today's was a barbecue sauce from scratch. That is, ooh. Ooh, it's amazing. Um, people fight over it. So, <laughs> and it's so simple to make. Um, it, believe it or not, it has orange juice and applesauce in it. And, uh, I mean, oh, apple juice, that's... and apple juice, rather. Sorry, apple juice. Um, and it wow. is so great. It's so great. So, yeah, you guys find me. Look me up. Um, feel free to send me a message. I Listen, I don't bite unless you ask me to. <laughs> 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 yes, please reach out to Larry. He's the best, truly. Like he's just uh well, you guys all can see at this point. <laughs> he's amazing. Um Larry, thank you so 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 much for coming on and sharing your time and your wisdom and I I know people are going to love love this one and love you and uh anything else you want to say before signing off? Get your pizza. Where's your pizza? Get your pizza. December 14th. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Too much pizza. Too much pizza. Don't choke on your pizza. <laughs> Don't like choke Alexa. on the pizza. Don't choke on the pizza. <laughs> okay. Well, I love you, Larry. Thank you so much for coming on. And everyone, go get your pizza. And until next time, as Brandon always says, journey well. Bye, everyone. Bye. That's it for this week's episode. If you're a listener with a story to share and are interested in being featured on a future episode of this special series, you can email me at alexa at positivehead.com. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear Brandon constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place we know of to do it period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com slash positive head. Check it out. Otherwise, tune in next Friday for another P-Head Posse episode. And until then, as Brandon always says, journey well.